What I see as the gap is the thirst for depth. We have a lot of people in Nigeria who know a lot about a lot of things, right? And one of the gaps that I've seen consistently over five years is people having the thirst to become experts. And also the resources to provide the guidance to that journey, to that cliff, top of the cliff. So the blind will only lead the blind as far as they can see or not see. And the gap there is having people who have walked this journey have the level of expertise but are willing to pay back, willing to do something that is beyond themselves, willing to just invest in the people invest in the people invest in the people I, I don't know how else to say it and i i have 950 students standing up and 300 of them having to stop because they don't have laptops they can't afford laptops they can't they you could see they were struggling. They tried to stay as long as they could doing their homework with mobile phones until they just couldn't do it anymore. That, yeah, that's a gap. That's a gap. Like, how do we sort that as a country? How do we make it that we don't have to beg Europeans and Americans to provide training resources for our own people. How do we go past the handouts and begin to take empowerment into our hands as a country? That's one big gap. And what AI can do for us as a nation? Dang. <laughs> ah. Wow. It's a tool. AI is a tool, right? And I've heard a lot of people when I when we were planning this, a lot of people, ah, oh, AI. I know how to use AI now. ChatGPT is my friend. But in class now, many many people, it's just dawning on them that whether we like it or not, AI is going to impact every business in the world. And it's either you're thinking about how to mitigate and make it that you're using it the right way and not endangering your data and equipping your teams. Or be ready to pack up and go at some point. It, it, it's, it's, it's just a matter of time. What is important to me is that Nigeria is not 10 years behind, like we are in a few things. I feel we've got the talent. This unleashes the potentials you can't even begin to talk about, right? We have students who come to three-month boot camp, and today they own their own channel, all their content AI produced. A 55-year-old, no, 60-year-old woman built everything making bringing joy into homes because she took a three-month boot camp to learn how to use ai to create a story to create a channel to bring joy peace whatever her choice into homes people will misuse it that's inevitable but we now have the power to change the narrative so that products are not just created by a particular sect of people for a particular set of people. We are black, we are beautiful, we are amazing, we are intelligent. Why aren't we contributing into a space that has just been brought into a leveling field for all of us? Generative AI wasn't 
that big a thing five years ago. But now it is. So why do we have to wait until when it's an old thing to step in and make a difference? Generative AI is powerful. I think it will help us in a huge way. Empower people to make money. Empower us as a country to have digital exports at a scale and a speed that is unprecedented. I mean, talk about cash flow. Oh, well, that, that's, that's my simple way of looking at it. Um, what was the turnout in terms of numbers for this conference? What has the feedback been like? And are we looking forward to another next year? Wow. So the turnout on Monday, on, um, yeah, by Monday evening, I was reaching out to our PR person. Like we, the numbers are just, it just went through the roof in the last two weeks. Okay. And from what I heard day one, we had well over 490 to 500 people within the first few hours come in. And then as the day went on, people were just trooping in into the different classes. So we kind of lost track, but generally we're looking at about 600 plus. We had to shut down registration at noon because yeah, we would have had nowhere to put them. Like you can see today was, yeah, yeah, dealing with space. Um, we had to bring people out here. Um, that was a pleasant surprise, really pleasant surprise for us. At a point, we were wondering, is anybody interested at all? But we've learned that people take their time with these things, right? Um, your second question was... Uh, feedback. The feedback. And are we expecting this? Okay, yeah. The feedback has been phenomenal. Like... In each track, I see people come out and they're like, oh my gosh, I've just learned something I didn't know. So I was with the product management uh, track as well. I stood in because one of our team wasn't there. Yeah, they were heads down for two days. <laughs> I've been training for a very long time. And I can tell you, it's for you to get people of age ranges from 21 to 55 into a room. And they only go out to ease themselves and take a phone call. Engaged, participating. That blew my mind. The hunger level blew my mind. People were just, they were determined because they were seeing things they've never seen before. And will this happen again next year? So I'll be blunt about this. We spent a whooping amount of money on this. Out of pocket. And it didn't stop even after we arrived. We were just spending, right? But we were determined to make it successful. Will it happen again next year? I believe so. I believe so. I believe we need to get it right in terms of partnerships. We need organizations who are based here and have a thirst for the future that is not a near sight but a far sight to partner with. Because for this one, we had to just leverage people that have done things with us in the past and relationships that trusted us. Um, the responses from government organizations, um, I'll say that I'm hoping for a better one next year.